as some of you will have seen, I sent an email or 30 out um, some weeks ago um, on the subject of open source meetup. There are quite a few existing open source meetups in Wellington. Um, <laughs> you could argue there are too many. Um, so why is that a problem? One of, the, one of the big issues is the site, the fact that people are operating within their tech bubble, they're talking to other people who are in the same tech bubble, um, and not necessarily knowing what other people are doing. Um, and, and for example, not considering that what other people are doing is interesting because they're others. Now, I know a lot about this because um, for about 18 years, I've been coordinating the Perl user group. And everybody who doesn't do Perl knows Perl is dead and has been for a very long time. <laughs> so therefore, they don't come along to the group um, where we've had talks on um, Python, PHP, Ruby, JavaScript, obviously, C, C++, Lua, Erlang, <coughs> even basic. There was a fascinating talk um, dissecting a basic program that was an implementation of Tetris in one line. Um, um, but, you know, then we also have talked about things like different databases, different key value stores, different um, methodologies and things that people use, like <coughs> test-driven development, behavior-driven development, continuous deployment, um, lots of operations, tools that people might use, none of which is anything specifically to do with Perl. So people who don't do Perl see the label Perl user group and don't come along and miss out on this stuff. And similarly, I don't go along to lots of other groups. Um, so that's one problem, or two problems. Um, another thing is within these groups, um, it can be quite a small pool of people who are being called on each month to, to rustle up a talk, um, which means it's hard to organise talks. And if you're not getting regular talks with, with new and interesting subjects, then you're not going to get new people. Um, and so your pool will shrink and it will continue in a downward spiral. Um, over a year ago, I sent a message out to the Pearlmongers list saying, do we need to keep doing this month? To which the answer was a resounding, yes, you do. Um, so um, what I did a year later, which is this iteration, was I said, I'm not going to keep doing this. Um, I'm going to start a whole new group. And you can either come with me or not. Um, so what I'm wanting to do, and we've had one meeting so far, first of the monthly meeting, is set up a group to cross-pollinate these different tech bubble silo things. So um, getting people along to learn about what other people are doing. Um, new stories from new people. Um, and particularly, I mean, there's got to be something in it for me. I want to learn about stuff that other people are doing that I haven't heard about. Um, you may have noticed I am the uh, archetypal pale, stale male. Um, hopefully we can get some people who aren't. Um, and in particular, not just developers and operations people who tend to dominate some of these tech meetups. Um, a lot of us could do with being exposed a bit more to actual users, you know, business people who have requirements and, and are talking about the things that have worked for them and, and excite them um, and make them happy. Um, but I'm not talking about doing much differently. So if, for example, you go into the Python group and you're doing a talk about some cool Python thing, then I would love it if you'd volunteer to come along and do the exact same talk at this other meetup where you're not just preaching to the choir, you're maybe trying to win some converts. Um, lots of things that 
that could be talked about that wouldn't necessarily fit well within what people perceive those those groups meant to be, but you know, they can all all accept a, a vast range of subjects, but it's just not obvious from the outside that they are. Uh, th this was one, um, we had a, a really good talk on this from one of the Pearlmongers guys a while back, um, where he was talking about a, applying debugging um, techniques to himself. Um, and so it was kind of related to depression and um, getting burnt out and, and what he did about those sorts of things. Um, and, you know, if you were suffering in, in that line, your first thought might not have been, where is the Pearlmongers group? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, for our first meet-up last, uh, last month, we combined the Wellington um, Linux users group and Pearlmongers. Um, so we had one combined meeting and, and invited whoever wanted to come along. Um, and we didn't call it Wallymongers. Um, tossed around some other ideas that are a bit meh. Um, I'm not at all opposed to the uh, Open Source Society, um, and they've been very helpful in, in setting things up. Um, and so we, we sort of we, we are definitely working with them. Um, it's just boring. So um, this was a. a <laughs> concept that I tried some years ago and then I didn't actually have time to make it work at the time. Um, there was a group in London called the Open Source Show and Tell or OSAT um, and I said that's an awesome name, can we use it? And they said yes, kid. So if we put Wellington on the front of that then we get WASAT <laughs> um, with a speech bubble motif to sort of imply this is about getting together and talking. Um, I, initially, I wasn't sure whether it needed an exclamation point or a question mark or, or, or what. And then I thought, ah, but we can tie it into scripting languages. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what that's about. Um, and wouldn't that make an awesome laptop sticker? Yes. Answer is yes. But. <laughs> um, so we will have regular meetings. Um, We've, hang on, what have I got there? We've got lots of channels. Um, we need speakers. Um, and as I say, if you've done a talk at another group and would like to come and do it again for us, I'd definitely be keen to hear from you. Um, I would prefer not doing all the work coordinating it. So if, if you're good at that, then um, talk to me and we can share it around. Um, Donovan is going to be helping out there, so that's good. We've done it here once, we'll do it here again, but if another um, venue comes up, like someone else wants to host the meeting, then I'm definitely in favour of that. Um, Catalyst kindly sponsored pizza for the uh, first meeting, not sure if that'll keep happening, but um, if some other company wanted to step up, we wouldn't be saying no. So we've got a website, um, we've got a meetup um, channel there, and man, do I hate meetup. Um, but we're going to keep doing it because some people apparently like it. Um, we've got Twitter, we've got a mailing list, so pick your poison, you can keep up with, with what's happening. Um, hopefully I'll also remember to put it on the um, events uh, thing on the staff directory. Um, that being one of the reasons why I built that feature in the first place. Um, <laughs> so if you have questions or answers, then, then come and talk to me. I mean, I could try a few now. But I mean, the, the key thing is finding someone who's going to do a talk. Um, so if, if um, you can encourage someone to volunteer, then, then please do that. Um, send, send people um, to, to these places. Um, and um, this one in particular, the website, um, sees what's happening at the upcoming meeting um, and links to all the other channels that you could be using um, and also has a bit of an explanation about why, what, you know, what this is intended to be about. Um, 
And if you can also, if you could think of someone who would be good to speak, um, then you could let me know and I could maybe approach them and, and it's not my phone. Um, you could approach, I could approach them. So, yeah, it's a possibility. Is that a question, Jonathan? No. All right, thumbs up from Jonathan. Yeah. Not the worst idea ever. <laughs>